good afternoon. Uh, my name is Miroslav Stampar. Uh, I'm working for the Croatian government's CERT, part of the Information System Security Bureau in Croatia. And today I would like to talk about the, the buffer overflows, the attacks and defenses, what was then and what, what is now. So this presentation should have lots of technical details in it and also I am time constrained to the 50 minutes so I will try to, to, to haste it up so I could present you some of attacks from the most simple to the, to the difficult one that's, that are used in common buffer overflow exploitations. So this is the <laughs> This is summary of the presentation. So, basically, the rules of the game game has changed in last decade. So, you'll see in the history part from the 2006 to 2007, uh, defensive mechanisms such as DEP and ISLR came in. And once those defensive mechanisms are used properly, buffer overflows or the attackers using the buffer overflows don't have a, don't stand a chance. So I'll try to, to present the both defensive mechanisms and attacking defense uh, attacking mechanisms, so you could get a grip what what was used before, what is used now. So this is the this is the definition copied from the Wikipedia. So buffer overflow is basically any kind of anomaly where the data is written to the buffer and if it's written uh, in, uh, in unchecking way, there is a possibility that the boundaries will be overwritten and the adjacent memory will be overwritten. So basically problem the problem here is that the adjacent memory is, is in most cases the stack or the in case of the heap based buffer overflow, the next heap. So in uh, most common most common situation either C or C++ C++ will be involved. So buffer overflows are usually uh, going on in the compiled code. In all those interpreted languages, they all have the automatic boundary checking, so this is a kind of legacy from the, from the makers of the C and C++. So that's the way it is now. Uh, hence, lots of defensive mechanisms have evolved, which are protecting the already all the vulnerable uh, programs you will see later on. <coughs> Basically, there are two two types of buffer overflows. Most common one is the stack-based, and the the other one is the heap-based. In stack-based uh, buffer overflow, there is a static allocated built-in array used. So, in in C C++, that's something like like this, so you have the array which is described by the by the these parentheses, and in the heap based uh, case you will have something like this. So you will have the malloc. So in most most cases it's the stack based buffer overflow. It looks simplified like this. So you as an attacker. Uh, have the mean to write to the buffer, so it can be any kind of the user input involved coming from the console or, or file file input or the or the traffic going on so if there is no no uh, checking of the boundary conditions here, you can easily overri overwrite these parts here which are adjacent most usually we are targeting this part the return address of the current function. So this most commonly uh, 
described as the EAP. So you, you are taking control of the EAP. If you are able to, to write here, you will be able to, to jump to the, to the arbitrary address of our interests in further attack. In heap based or flow, you are basically all writing the, the adjacent chunk here or chunks. And this is the uh, more trickier way to, this is, a, uh, this is a more trickier to exploit than the stack based. Thing is that you are targeting this metadata part. Most, in, most, uh, in most cases, or this the old attack, there is a newer one, but in the, uh, in the practical mean, you are targeting the, those pointers that are part of the metadata of the adjacent chunk. So there is a, an, an attack where you are writing the chunk and its metadata, and if you are able to write the arbitrary uh, addresses into those pointers, there is a way to, to write also the, also the uh, data to, to addresses of your choice and to take over the control of the program. Vulnerable code in the stack-based case looks like this. So basically, you have the statically allocated uh, buffer here, and you are using some kind of the, of the unsafe uh, C, C++ function. In this case, there is a string copy. So if, if the input data here is uh, bigger than the 100 uh, characters, this buffer will be, will be overwritten. In the heap-based case, you have the two heaps allocated. Uh, one near the another, and if uh, the attacker is or the user is writing to the to the first uh, heap, if the user is writing uh, a large piece of data, it will be also able to, to write the the uh, content of the heap and the metadata of the heap. History goes like this. So. In 1961, there, is a, there was an excellent uh, protection in the, those old two, three bedroom uh, machines that was called the executable space protection, which is now commonly uh, named as the data execution uh, pr uh, prevention and the no, exec no executes you will see in following slides. So basically, we had the, the uh, means of protection in 1961, or, or at least the, the part of, for, for defensive, uh, but later on it was not used in, in, uh, in uh, later years. Also, uh, out of uh, more interesting things going on, there was the, there was the case with the smashing the stack for fun and profit. This the uh, article written by the elephant. You most probably heard about the this this title. Also, there was the uh, there were two two popular worms going on: Morris Worm and the Code Red, which exploited common exploits in those days, which were also the buffer overflows. Also in 2004, you can see that uh, this protection Enix and DEP were introduced to the Windows and Linux. After that, the, the, uh, the attacking difficulty became harder and harder. We will see later on. Also, you can see here there are, uh, there are a mix of Visual Studio flag GS and the GC flag F stack protector that are today used in the compiling of the uh, system libraries. Also, it, they are uh, recommended to use in, also in, in, in other cases. So basically, what those flags do, so you're programming your code, and if you use those flags, uh, it will just warn you or, or, or prevent you from compiling any further if, if the buffer overflow is uh, found in the code. So basically, you have those strong protections implemented in 2004 and 2005. So NX, DEP, and ISLR. Also, there are those flags used in the case of the Visual Studio here, 
and the case of GCC. So basically after the 2005, the exploitation, at least in the system part, came extremely hard. So if you are, uh, if you are reading the, the exploits that are coming uh, lately, you'll see at least in the case of, of the Linux system exploits, so be, particularly in the, in the part of the privilege escalation, you will see that all those exploits are not buffer overflows, but the common logic bugs. So in lots of cases, there is a, some kind of race condition going on where the attacker is, is using the, the privileged mechanism to, to introduce its code into it. So basically, it doesn't have anything to do with the buffer overflows. So this is the first, uh, first def defensive mechanism I would like to introduce. So basically, what it does, this data execution prevention of or no executes. This is the the uh, this is the data used in the Linux part. This is used in Windows world. So basically, what it does, in most common uh, words, it prevents you to to uh, to put the programming code into the stack and to later on to execute it. So any kind of buffer overflows doesn't. Uh, uh, if you, if you are able to, to, to exploit the buffer overflow, you won't be able to, to introduce the programming code to the stack. So you won't be able to, to uh, exploit it, at least in this uh, more simple way. Later, they came, there came the ISLR. So this is the other space layout randomization. This is the other piece of the puzzle which bothered uh, people that want to do the vent the systems. So basically there is another way how to exploit the buffer overflows if you are not able to, to introduce the executable part into the stack. Later on you will see that it's called return oriented programming. Thing is that in lots and lots of attacking scenarios uh, attacker needs something to, to jump or, or needs some some solid address to call so he could be able to 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 introduce some uh, to introduce some functionality into his payload or shell code. So basically if you want to to call the system address or system function you need to know the the exact location of that system function in the in the uh, current programming's address space and if you are able to or you use this defensive mechanism the, those system function addresses will, will change each time you, you execute the, the executable. At least in the Linux, in the Linux world, uh, those addresses are changing each time the program is, is uh, run. In the Windows world, those addresses uh, are changed in the, in, uh, when you reboot the machine. All the system functions will, will just change the, the address where they are located. So basically, for example, if you want to, to run some uh, Venus function like WinExec, you will see later on in one example. If you want to run the WinExec, uh, which will call the cmd.x in the Windows world, you won't be able to, to run it because you won't know what's the address of that, that WinExec uh, uh, function in the, in the, programming, uh, in the program's virtual space. Stack canaries. This is the one simple defensive mechanism that was, that was introduced with the compilers. So basically, uh, uh, writers of the compilers introduced one, uh, one a random value. Most commonly it's random. It's being put uh, just before the, the uh, program parameters and the return address. And if the, this same a value is all written by the buffer overflow. Uh, then, after the, the after the part of the function where we could be able to to, to take over the, the execution control, uh, there is one um, mechanism implemented by the compiler which checks the stack canary if it's missing or it has the invalid value. It will just discard the the, the further run. 
So basically, stack scanner is nothing more than the than the uh, than the value that is written just before the the end of the uh, buffer. And if it's being overwritten, it 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 will prevent you from from further uh, exploiting the buffer overflow. ASCII armor is defensive mechanism where the uh, system functions are enforced to, to use the zero zero, uh, zero, zero uh, character in its address. So if you know basics of the buffer overflow, you'll know that the zero zero is a big nemesis of the, of the buffer overflow. So basically, uh, in 99% of, of those vulnerable functions like string copy, if there is a shellcode uh, using this address, so shellcode wants to, to use the function like system on the Linux uh, world, and it has this 00, zero in its uh, address, it will just, string copy will just stop the copying of the, of the buffer, so, so it will just skip the, the later part of your uh, usable or malicious payload. So this is basically a simple way how to prevent the, the usage of, of system addresses. A structured exception handler. This is something uh, that is being described in the tutorials for the, for the buffer of exploitation as the system to prevent buffer offers, but the system wasn't uh, primary, uh, wasn't primarily introduced for the protection of the buffer offers, but just for the sake of of, uh, of properly doing the exception handling. So, if you know the basics of the object programming, you know that that if you have the couple of exception handlers uh, that are involved in the programming. Uh, in programming logic, you know that there is certain certain priority of those that needs to be uh, that needs to be run if there is an exception going on in the program. So basically, what is being done? This the this the simplified version of the of the structured exception handler chain. Basically, if there is an exception uh, going on in the program, first. Uh, the program is uh, is handling the the handling to the first exception handler. If it's if that exception handler is not able to to process the the exception, it just uh, goes to the next exception handler. It just bypasses the control to the next next exception handler. If this doesn't uh, is if this one is not able to 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 uh, to process the exception, it goes to the final one. And if this final one is not able to to process the exception handler, you will see that nice blue window, or not blue window, but the but the dialog that says something like access stats valid, invalid, and so on. Uh, so how I will show you the mean how to or, or how to how to exploit this chain here later on. Basically, this touch exception handler is something that is, lo that is um, used a lot by, by attackers. C-HOP, that's the protection mechanism introduced to, to protect the SEC. So, so uh, guys from the Microsoft, they they saw that lots of new exploits use the bypass of this or use the, the mechanism by used in the structure exception, exception handler. So they introduced the protection of that same mechanism. So one is C hop. Basically what C hop does it's it uh, links the one symbolic symbolic exception handler here to the end. So each time the, the exception is being raised, if the if the uh, if the chain is not properly being built, of or if it's being overwritten by the over buffer overflow, the uh, the the checking mechanism won't be able to go to this last 
exception handler. Safe seg is the similar protection mechanism where all the all the exception handling uh, addresses are collected and rented into one table, separate table, and each time the, the exception is being raised, all those exception handlers are being checked. So you don't have to, to memorize all this. You will I will <laughs> I will show you the ways how to, to exploit SEC and I hope that you will see what the problem here. What's what's the problem uh, introduced with this mechanism? Safe functions are also uh, or, or one of uh, one of best methods how to deal with the buffer overflow uh, protection. So basically, instead of using of all those unsafe functions, uh, the new safe functions were introduced where the explicit parameter size was introduced along the, the standard, uh, standard parameters here. So basically, if you use uh, the, uh, the difference between string copy and string L copy will be the size parameter. So uh, what, what it does, you give the size of the buffer to, the, to this safe function here along with other parameters and there is no way how how you will be able to overflow, overflow the buffer because the, the function itself won't be uh, won't copy nothing more than the size itself. So now we are going to the attacking part. So now I will show you the the uh, attacking methods used from the most simple to the to the those uh, more complex. So no sledding, no ramping, no sliding. Something that is that was used in in, in those older exploits. Also, this is a this is a method used in the hip spring. If you if you heard about it. So thing is that instead of using one shell code that is, for example, 300, 400 bytes uh, long, you extend it with lots of of dummy operations called no nop no operation and you jump to the address that you hope that will be in, in uh, just in that nop part so basically uh, basically imagine that you have a large ramp of no operations which are har harmless to, to jump into it and uh, at the end of it it's the usable malicious code so what, what's the purpose of this uh, attacking mechanism? Purpose is that in lots of cases, in the, all those older cases, stack is something that that is or that was unpredictable. But in those older days, stack was something that you knew that it will be along this uh, other space, but you you weren't sure that it will be the the exact address. So you just use the no sliding, so you introduce the, the large, for example, several megabytes of those no uh, uh, no operation instructions. At the end, you you uh, introduce the shell code, and you just uh, use the the address in between of the no slide to jump into it. Return to libc, also known as the returns to system or or arc injection. This is the attacking mechanism used to most commonly to uh, to exploit some kind of suite. You know what's this suite application? So this is the application that in in one part has the the highest privileges, and if you are able to introduce your code at the time of the of, of running of that same program, you will be able to, to become the root or administrator. So, in a third to libc, in most cases, you want to, to introduce the or, or you want to run the shell. So, you are introducing into the buffer overflow uh, the mechanism to call the, in this case, the function system, which will, uh, which will just use these parameters from the that are, uh, uh, that are passed here. So 
as this is this is the linear scale so this is the, the way how the buffer is being written or this is the malicious buffer so basically you are using lots of junk here so those structures are just used to, to come to the to the sweet part. Sweet part is the sweet part is the address itself where you want to, to introduce or, or where you want to take control of the of the uh, execution mechanism. So basically it's called EAP. So it's the extraction pointer which you want to overtake. And if you in this case if you overwrite it with the address of function system in case of Linux and if you introduce to the to the stack the uh, the address of string pin sh and the address of function exit, you will be able to to raise the shell out of the vulnerable application. You will see at one example I show you later on how it's being done. Return to register. This one of the one of one exploitation. Uh, exploitation methods, also known as the trampolining. thing is that in lots of cases when you are able to, to do the buffer overflow, you will see that the one of, of register will be, uh, will be just, with, will contain just the appropriate edges for you to use for the proper jump. So in case of the knob sledding, you needed to introduce the static address. It was uh, a problematic because stack is uh, can be uh, can be viewed as the, as the deterministic uh, mechanism. In a, in case of return to register, you are all passing that problem because in most cases ESP or the stack pointer register will just point you to the to the address just after the the uh, that. Uh, that sweet spot where you over, yeah, where you have overtaken the uh, instruction point, pointer. So basically, how the malicious buffer looks like. So basically, you are trying to to buffer overflow. You are using lots of junk uh, characters here. After after it, you use one address you have found previously to the junk PASP or call ASP instruction. So basically, if there is no ISLR defensive mechanism uh, used, you can use one static address which has the uh, which has the jump PSP or call ESP instruction, and when the when the buffer overflow uh, comes, <laughs> or when when it, when it's being uh, taken when, when the it's being uh, processed this address will be used to uh, to be returned to it and it will just uh, be used to, to jump to the ESP or the call ESP so so you will be able to jump to the location which the ESP is is uh, is uh, pointing and in most cases ESP just pointed to the to the afterwards after the after the this address itself. So this is a great way how to how to bypass that constant address problem. So you're just jumping here and afterwards you use this payload here for the malicious purposes. So why the reverse shell or something like that. You will see this compensating knobs in, in lots of these examples. Thing is that uh, you always need to expect the payload to use the the stack itself. So you you don't want the the payloads to push something or pop something from the stack. If the stack pointer is pointing to the payload itself, it will just overwrite itself. So you are always trying to to use some uh, in most cases. Uh, 8, 10, 16 knobs are used just to compensate that, uh, that space that could be used by, by the stack push or pop in the payload part. Egg hunting, this is something uh, quite interesting to be used. So if you will be, if you will have the, uh, 
wish to to further to further uh, play with those attacking mechanisms, you will see that the egg hunting is something really fun. Thing is that there are cases when you know that you can see that you can our attack. Uh, you can do the buffer overflow, you can take over the execution, but afterwards you have something like 50 to 10, 100 bytes that are usable for your execution path. In most cases, payloads, those useful, uh, useful uh, mechanisms like payloads for reverse shell, they are uh, large in size like 350 to 500 bytes so you have 50 bytes which you, which you can use for the execution but you need to, to squeeze some some uh, somehow the 350 bytes so here comes the egg hunting you use the small small uh, execution mechanism which will search the further in memory if there is any kind of the if there is an occurrence of this same buffer which is not trimmed in any way so you could just jump to that uh, that uncropped uh, buffer so for example you see one uh, uh, practical example you will see that the useful part will be five, uh, 50 bytes you can put anything useful into 50 bytes except the egg hunter and you will see that the egg hunter will be able to, to find the whole, in this case was the HTTP request. So one, one uh, header was, uh, was prone to the buffer overflow and the egg hunter that was, that was introduced by the, this same header value was being able to, to find the whole HTTP request inside the memory and once it finds the whole HTTP request inside the memory it, uh, it jumps to the payload inside this larger on, on crops buffer. So how it looks how it looks from the from this malicious buffer uh, perspective. So basically you want to you want to, to come to the to the buffer of some parts. You introduce the egg hunter here. You use the uh, address of jump PSP so this is the more complicated way I could also use the simple way but stick to me it's like this part is, is uh, used for the execution uh, to take over the execution part it's, it jumps here this part jumps here Egg Hunter uh, is trying to, to find the, the, egg, the egg itself inside the memory. One it finds itself uh, the egg inside the memory, it just uh, jumps to the to this uh, larger part. You will see it's better in the in the practical part. So basically you have one execution mechanism which searches for the bigger one. Uh, basically they are currently four or five uh, different egg hunter types it looks something like this so it's not clearly readable it's lots of assembler going on but in that small space the whole other space is a search for this particular payload so you have the payload which has the, the mark you were, you were put there and the egg hunter is searching for that exact mark and it jumps to the payload afterwards the things with the egg hunter types is the uh, what's also cool about them things that they are going through all uh, memory pages without triggering any exceptions how is it being done thing is that uh, they are low uh, windows functions which can be called that will that won't raise you an exception but it will just say you uh, it will just uh, return you a, a, a value which will say to you okay you don't have the read permissions here please move along and this egg hunter will just go each page each page each page each, it will just read all the memory content and search for the for the egg or the payload itself afterwards if it finds it it will just uh, jump to it 
say bypass as said this the attacking mechanism uh, it's popular or it was popular thing is that problem with the SEC bypass or problem with the structure exception handling is that uh, all those pointers that I uh, drawn here those pointers to the handler and the next exception handler in the chain are put onto the stack so now imagine that you are able to, to overwrite those pointers and uh, once you do the buffer orful part in lots of cases exception will be raised and if you are able to to overwrite those uh, pointers to the to the piece of code that you control you can just execute the shell code afterwards so uh, what's the what's the uh, useful part here thing is that thing is that uh, this pointer to the next uh, to the next tag exception handler is all written uh, by the jump to payload instruction. This the this the instruction which is being called by the, uh, the by the structure exception handler from here. So once the buffer of flow raises the exception, if you control this pointer which is here you will be able to, to execute those three uh, exec uh, those three instructions which will pass the control to here and this this part will just jump to your payload here. So it looks like <laughs> it's uh, it looks like it's complicated but once you, you do a couple of those you will see it. It's really uh, something that is it's repeatable, something that can be uh, easily be used in, in further exploits. Like this part is just all written with the with the exact four bytes in all cases. So it's EB06, which will just jump here. And in this part, this address uh, the sequence of commands needs to be found previously in the in the uh, programming space. You will see later on how can it be how can it be done. Afterwards, the payload is just concatenated here. Roping or the return-oriented programming. Now imagine that the that the uh, DEP or NX mechanisms are enabled or data execution protection. So you, as an attacker, you are able to. To do the buffer overflow, you are able to override the the uh, those sweet parts, but you are not able to to execute anything from the from the uh, from the buffer itself because all the buffer is uh, is marked as non-executable. So some clever uh, guys in, um, thought about how to to overcome that uh, obstacle and they invented the return oriented programming what is it all about uh, thing is that you don't need the you don't need the instructions uh, you don't need the, the binary of instructions to, to be able to execute anything you can just use addresses of instructions in sequence which can be used by the by the uh, by the Stack uh, or, or by the by the uh, read uh, mechanism. Things that you push the return addresses of this, of sequences of commands, which will end with the read command. Things that uh, imagine that that you put the address of the increment ax uh, read uh, comma sequence. Afterwards, you put the you put the address of the sequence which uh, calls some system function afterwards it has the red so once the uh, buffer of flow uh, uh, tries to execute the or, or tries to return the the execution to 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 this part in in your buffer it will just return to each of those addresses 
uh, execute those uh, those headers, uh, those instructions. It will do the return, but the return itself we just jump to the to the next. Uh, it's called the ROP. To just jump to the next uh, address, it will call this next address. The the that sequence sequence will end with the red. So you are able to to just jump from here to here by just using those those addresses. So it's it's a, a popular mean or popular way how to use uh, or, or how to exploit buffer overflow, uh, particularly in those newer versions of, of Windows. Uh, what's the purpose of or, or internal programming? Things that it's kind of complicated, but there are means how to how to call the system functions which can uh, which can just disable the the data execution uh, protection and uh, if you are able to, to to do that with the rope chain or you are able to, to call one of those functions you you will be able to disable the the or you will be able to, to mark this part as the from non executable to the executable uh, of the uh, that same buffer you you were uh, able to, to overwrite and afterwards you the, the execution will just uh, continue with your binary payload. So you are, you are just using the, the return oriented programming to disable the uh, to disable the protection mechanism here afterwards the, the, the execution just follows on here. Uh, heap spraying this is a buzzword that can be uh, a read in lots of, of newer exploits. Things that uh, lots of, of browser uh, browsers are attacked with this. Uh, as I have the, uh, I'm kind of constrained. I'll just say a couple of words here. Things that in heap spraying, you are able to to overtake the the uh, the to do the buffer overflow. To, to overtake the EAP or the address where the execution should continue. But instead of using the return oriented programming, you can use the heap spraying. Heap spraying is goes like this from the visual uh, perspective. You're trying to, to introduce the the, uh, the large blocks of the knob slides and, and your uh, useful payload. So things that you are just copying uh, payloads together with the knob slides in, in, in large quantities inside the memory. Things that heap is something that is becoming deterministic after a couple of, of calls. So if you are able to, to fill the to, to introduce lots of those uh, large chunks of the payload and knobs. Uh, after a while, you will see that the uh, chunks like this will be introduced to the memory with the predictable uh, memory addresses. So, things that uh, these are lower ad addressing space. This is the lower addressing space, I know, with some common uh, browser. And things that uh, if you do lots of his praying, you introduce one large chunk like here, and you will be able to to jump anywhere inside of you know, this part. You will be able to execute the payload itself. Now the demo time. I'll I'll show you. I have ten minutes, fifteen minutes. Mm -hmm. Try to. How long do? You, how much time do I have? Does anybody know? Yeah. Just keep going. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, I'll need to sit down. So this is a large area to, to fill in 15 minutes, but I'll try to to just show you glimpses of the of the exploitation. I prepare five examples. I will try to to keep up the pace. So return to libc, this is the proof of concept. So basically how all the exploitations uh, begin. Some, somebody somewhere uh, uh, finds a way how to buffer flow something. And he 
he uh, writes writes the proof of concept to the exploit DB. You find the proof of concept like this, and you try to exploit it. So basically, this B of V e, uh, is a is a simple uh, buffer of application that I made just to show you how the return to libc works. It's it looks like this. So it's a pretty basic buffer overflow. So if uh, the if the uh, data of more than 100 uh, bytes is introduced, buffer overflow uh, takes over. So how it looks like how it looks like here. I show you. This is the uh, this is the platform I will use to to uh, to perform the exploitation. So this is the buffer of pass. So it just has run the application with the 200 A's here. So return to libc goes like this. So you were able to to overwrite the EAP. The first thing you do this is the 101 of the buffer overflow. You use the pattern create from the from the metasploits. You say what's the size of the buffer. You see the size of the buffer is 200 characters. So 200 characters you've seen here from the from the uh, from the proof of concept, you fill this with this special, with this special 200 uh, character uh, string. Afterwards, you run it inside the debugger. So, so you run the BOF. You say arguments here are the same. Uh, this same string, you set this, it next that you need to restart, you restart, you run it, the exception or, or not the exception, x valuation uh, goes, it, uh, is raised here, you see this character or, or this uh, value here, this is the special value, this is one of those values coming from this that uh, same special string. There is a nice, or, or this is the uh, a plugin for the immunity debugger, which is commonly used for, by the exploit developers. It is now used also in the Win debugger. I'll show you here how this, uh, what's, uh, what is it used for. This is the Swiss Army uh, tool for the exploitation. So now I was. Ask the Mona to find all the. It will just go to the to the uh, process uh, address space and to try to find these special characters from here. You can see here that the AP was all written by the same value, and the offset of this same special value was the one one two. So basically what it says, this Mona is expecting this same special uh, uh, a string coming uh, from the from Metasploit's pattern create and it says to you that the, that the buffer overflow is uh, taking over the uh, AAP uh, register after 112 characters. So basically what it says to you it says to you that if you do this, after afterwards you are taking over the EAP. So I'll show you. You always need to to also this is the one on one of exploitation. You also always need to to. To take care of the of the final buffer size, so if we start with the 200 characters, you need to end with the 200 characters because in most cases it will just something will, will go out of boundaries and you you won't be able to exploit it. So we'll try to to to, to uh, restrain the buffer size to the original size. It was 200 characters. So 
just fill the buffer. Here comes the uh, sweet part. I'm just <laughs> In case of the return to libc in Windows, you want to call the winexec. Afterwards, you need to you want to call the you want this to be the return address after the winexec is being called. Here you need to, to put the address of the uh, cmd.exe and here you can put 4 bytes of junk because this is the uh, something I show you I'm not uh, in, I'm not improvising here because this is the exact uh, command so exact parameters that need to be passed to the exec. those two this one is dummy, you can put here anything. Here you need to put the address of the CMD line, or cmd.exe. In the, here, this is the return address after the winexec is being called. Now, how to find the winexec address? You can find it like putting the breakpoint to it. You'll see that the address is this. This is constant, at least in the case of the on the Windows XP SP3. So basically, you are putting this this uh, value in long, low uh, Indian order here. This is just the function called to extract pack to to unpack this or to pack this value to the four bytes in low Indian order. Exit process. So you put the breakpoint to the exit process. You copy the address. You copy the address here. Address of cmd.exe. Cool thing about Mona is that it provides you a way how to, to do this. So you can search the whole address space for the cmd.exe if you try to find it. Here you can see one address which has the 00, zero inside of it. You don't want to use it. As you recall, 00, zero is the enemy of buffer flows. But you found this, this address here. So it's coming from this library. You just copy it here and four bytes of junk. So basically, you can put here a common string for, for junking is show you for junking is dead, <laughs> but you can use whatever you want. So basically, if you run this. Now, now imagine that the this BOF imagine that the BOF is privileged is privileged program and if you run if you run it like this so it would just call the BOF with this special buffer you can see this so basically you have taken all the the uh, you have called the winexec with the with the shell part. So this is the shell coming out of the of the program itself. If you run the program itself, you won't get the shell. So get the point. So this is the first example. So this is uh, dangerous for the privileged applications. So if you are able to to overtake the privileged application like this, it's a win. Afterwards, the second. You see that I want to show you. So goes like this. Somebody, so this is an imaginary situation, a scenario. Somebody has posted the, the POC for the free float FTP program. It's a free program like this. So somebody has posted it here and you want to exploit it. You will see in lots of, of those POCs bad characters. Bad characters 
as something that the, that the original creator of the POC has recognized that those charters are bad for the further exploitation. And you will need to, to avoid the usage of those uh, charters in, in, your, uh, uh, in your buffer. So here you put the, the address, that's the address of this FTP server. So let's run the FTP with the uh, with the debugger, we run it. So let's just skip the, this part as there is no time. I just create the that special pattern with the thousand characters like this. We'll copy it here and we'll just run the POC. Here you can see also one special value coming from the from the buffer of loads uh, from the buffer of the program. We will say to Mona please find the, all those occurrences of those special charters. It said to us that the EAP was all written by not one of those special ways from the option 247. You just use that same knowledge. So you just fill the 247 junk charters like this. Afterwards, so, so this is the, the padding part, so you, are, you want it to, to stay in the 1000 bytes charter range like in the original POC, POC, so it goes like this. So here, this is the example to the, for the return to register, but here you want to say the address of jump ESP or call ESP, which will just give you a control. Here we will see couple puts couple of or compensating operation uh, instructions like I told you I use commonly 16 bytes and afterwards we will put here a payload. Payload I've used in all those uh, examples payloads that was created with the like this so reverse TCP toward our address port 444 and you want to in all those cases you want to put the bad characters so MSF and call we just uh, take care though that none none of these bad characters are come uh, are coming into our payload. So just to hasten up, I'll just copy paste the payload. So basically, it should be the same as this. So payload part. So this is the payload for the shell code, uh, reverse shell code. We want to to run the netcat listener on port 444 and that's basically it so you can see we filled everything except the address of jump PSP call SP Mona to the rescue so Mona has a nice uh, command so it's called jump so basically you tell Mona to find all addresses with the which would jump to the ESP to the ESP register it goes and goes and goes to take 10 seconds okay afterwards now you don't need to, to afterwards these parts are, are uh, 
are of interest to us because these parts are telling you that this instruction is coming from the page which is protected by those uh, by those flags or those protect mechanisms. In this case, ISLR is is uh, okay. I will just skip. you can just use the the first usable address from here, and we will just put it. So basically this is the jump PSP address. So we have the junk, jump PSP address, uh, compensating knobs, payload, and the this padding part. So just to so now we will just rerun the the uh, vulnerable application and we have the listening shell here, listening netcat instance, and we just run our application. Oh, not here, but the the uh, expected. This is the expected final result. So we have the shell toward the the attacked machine. So we have taken all the machine or the vulnerable FTP application. So, so this, the, this was the example for the return to register. Mm -hmm.